everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Just going to go through the average X function here, uh, but also a bit of a preview around uh, how this applies to the Learning Summit or how this is going to be used in the Learning Summit. Now, average X is an incredibly versatile function, and the way that I'm going to showcase it during the summit is really for trend analysis. It's a really effective measure to utilize when you're actually trying to identify trends or trying to average something out. Obviously, average X um, is trying to average something. But I want to talk about the underlying uh, theory behind it all, or what actually happens when you run the average X function. I think that's what, what you're going to really benefit from you know, in terms of learning how the average uh, X function works properly. Um, now, I'm going to start simple, and then we can move into uh, more complex examples, because a big part of understanding average X is twofold, actually. First of all, it's so important to understand evaluation context. So what is the initial context on a calculation? And then from there, what is the virtual table that we're going to iterate through? These are the two key things uh, with an average X function. So let's let's just have a look at a demo. So, <coughs> so I've got here uh, average sales per day. Okay. So what we could do is we could, for example, um, we could go and grab, say, let's go and have a look at, say, our product name, uh, product name dimension in our report. And I'm going to drag average sales per day up against that. And so what this is doing, um, first of all, you've got to, uh, as I mentioned, understand the initial context. Well, the initial context in this case, I'll just blow this up just a little bit. The initial context is obviously the product name, right? So product one in this case, for this particular result, is filtered in the model. And then depending on what we place inside of here, we're going to iterate through every single, <coughs> uh, every single row in that particular um, in this particular dimension now may, some of you will, will realize that you don't actually have to have values around this you could just have the dates table but i think it's good practice to actually utilize values and, and it'll become clearer in a second so what we're doing inside of average x you have to put a table well that's what values is doing here it's putting a virtual table in there for us of just the date column and what we're going to do for for product one we're going to evaluate through every single day so just think about going through row by row every single day and work out what the measure is what the total sales is for those for that particular day and so for every single day we're going to have a total sales amount for just product one in this case and then uh, once all of those calculations are done in the background, all virtually, then we're going to average them up. And that's how we get 43,000, right? And so this is also going to include days, days where there's no sales, etc. cetera. So, so, so zero is going to be applied. But the key thing is to understand, okay, the iteration. The iteration, that, this is an iterating formula. We're going to iterate through the table that we specify inside the formula. And in this case, we'll put a table of just one column, uh, and that's the date column. Now, what we can do is we can um, make it more complex, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to do average sale per customer. So look at, um, it's very similar, right? There's not much difference at all. All I've done is I've subbed in a different, uh, a, a different dimension in here. So instead of, and I'll just drag this in uh, to the table here. So instead of iterating through every single day, for product one, we are going to iterate through every single customer and work out on average how much of each product do we sell to a particular customer because what we're going to do is we're going to uh, filter product one and that's going to give us a list of all of the customers uh, in our in our model and then we're going to evaluate well what is the total sales of each of, uh, of each individual customer and then we're going to jump back here and average the, all of those virtual results up so not too bad, right? Not too bad. Relatively intuitive if you try and step through it. Now, the, the great thing about these average, average X in particular is you can get way more advanced, right? You can get way more advanced in terms of the virtual table that you place in here. And that's one of the examples that I'm going to run through in the Learning Summit is I'm going to show you using uh, average X how you can cr showcase trends or create uh, calculations which showcase trends really effectively. Now, just to round things off, is you can make this even more complex, right? We can go um, uh, average sales per month. So I can say all I've got to do here is change the dimension uh, inside the values function. And this is quite interesting, right? Because a lot of you might think, well, for this particular for, for this particular result, we could have actually just put, say, the dates table inside of here, right? 
and we would get exactly the same answer. Nothing would change. You'll see that that stayed exactly the same. The reason why I like to use values is because for this exact reason, right? Well, this particular column came directly from that same table, but you couldn't just reference the table in here. You'd have to use this exact formula. So what we're trying to work out here is the average of every single month and year using exactly the same logic. It's just the virtual table that we are iterating over is not every day, it's every month and year. And then exactly the same thing is happening in behind the scenes, we're calculating the sales for every single month and year, and then we're averaging them, averaging up all of those results at the end. Okay, so I think I'll round uh, off this example here, but this is this is really uh, just sort of, I guess, an intro into AverageX, like how you actually use it, um, and I'll be going into it in a bit more detail about how you can get a little bit more complex during um, during the Learning Summit. So certainly worth uh, worth coming along to the, uh, or, or registering for the summit if you, if you haven't already, but um, this is just going to be one of the things that uh, I cover versus uh, across uh, the four sessions, um, but there's going to be a lot more, obviously. We've got... Um, uh, beginner tips, you know, how to get started with the model and, and with DAX formula, then moving into more advanced formulas like time intelligence, uh, segmentation patterns, uh, moving averages, etc. And then we're also going to uh, do a bit of work on predictions, so scenarios and what of analysis. So, so plenty to learn there. Um, so I'll leave a link below uh, in the description around uh, registration. Um, but um, and you'll find all the details uh, details there if uh, if you want to come along. Okay, all the best. Hopefully, you found this one helpful um, and learned a lot about the average X function. Um, if you like the content, definitely throw the video a like. Really appreciate it. Okay, catch you later.